The other thing that we're looking for uh, on this, uh, this, the, uh, this exact frame as well, so on the foot landing, is we're going to be looking at, uh, at the, the tibial angle here. So what we're looking at through, through here, so we're going to be drawing a line basically down the, uh, the shin and we're looking at uh, the, the angle here. Now, this is a great sort of tool we use through here because we can use this, this line as a bit of a shortcut tool because one of the key things and one of the, I guess, the faults or things that we see runners do quite commonly is that they will land a long way out in front of their, their center of mass. Now, what we mean by that, if we just take a step back, if we were to draw a line right through Holly's center of mass through here, okay, so usually that's, that's um, dissecting through that, that greater trochanter but if we have a look and zoom down through here, the, the landing in front of centre of mass is basically the distance between the, the initial contact, so in this case the heel, uh, and then also that, uh, that centre of mass line. Now, the, the, some out there will teach that you should be landing underneath your body and you shouldn't be landing at all in front, but that's physically impossible. All runners will land in front of their centre of mass. It's by a matter of how much. And some research that's looking at elite found that, that that actually equates to about 30 centimetres, so they will be landing in front there. Now, we can't measure that. We can't measure the distance uh, unless you've got a ruler on the, uh, on the treadmill there. We can't measure a distance of that, that uh, landing in front of the centre of mass with these apps, but we can eyeball it. But if we go and take a step backwards and talk about this, uh, this shin angle here, this is a really nice, uh, neat way of just, and if we're really pressed for time, and there's one measurement we can take from this sagittal view, then it's actually the shin angle. And what we want to see through here with our shin angle is we want to see a shin angle get as close to, to 90 degrees as we can. So we're sort of seeing on, on through here, so it's basically just drawing a line down the shin. Now that's 90 degrees. Now we can see in Holly's case through here, we're dealing with roughly about, uh, if we clear that through here, or oh, let's make a better line of that one there. So we can see we're about 86. So we're actually not, not far off from 85, 86 there. We're not far off from that. So we can say in Holly's case there, there might be a slight amount of overstride. Um, if we clear that and have a look at the other side there as well and compare to that right side, and we'll do the same thing on here, looking at that shin angle through here. And again, we're making a measurement down through here and it's 87, so it's actually pretty close. So I'd sort of say in, in, in Holly's case through here, she's pretty good. You know, it's pretty close to that at 90 degrees. It's not unusual to see some runners, especially when they're really over, over striding there, you'll see very large, very large angles of getting up to sometimes sort of 70 degrees where they're really landing right in front of that, so that center of mass. Now, one of the things that that does by landing so far out there and what we classify as overstriding is that does put more work on through the, uh, the knee. Um, the quads are an important brake or decelerator. They're working really hard when we initially contact the ground. And if we're landing a long way out in front of our center of mass, those quads have to work very hard to, to break ourselves. It's also the way I like to explain it to our runners. If we're trying to move forward and we're landing a long way out in front, uh, that's basically going to be acting like a brake and it kind of defeats the purpose of what we want to be doing. So we do want to sort of bring that back. We want to see that shin angle get as close to 90 degrees as we can.